Now let's have another look at those compression settings. I just opened up the system settings, device, go to the 1920 preset, and I'm going to click modify so I can change it. And let's have a look at these different codecs that you can use. So I talked about uncompressed and the two Grass Valley ones, what about the others? These are basically just different codecs that you could use. I find the HQ ones actually do very good quality and don't use up too much space. Now you might say, no, I really like to use AVC Intra, Panasonic's format, so you can click on that and it'll capture it directly into Panasonic's format. Personally, I'd only use that if I was thinking of outputting to AVC Intra at the end of it, because it'll save a bit of time when it comes to the encoding, otherwise I'd use HQ. The other ones I've got here are different variations of MPEG. So you've got XDCAM HD and XDCAM EX and MPEG2. These are all MPEG codecs. So what it's going to be doing is taking the footage and then encoding it on the fly into a particular type of MPEG where you, know, you have the occasional complete frame and then lots of bits of frames. So it's going to be harder work for the computer. Now, as long as you've got a nice fast computer, it should be able to keep up with it. But it is harder work. You can do a custom one or you can make something up that's just totally compatible with either XDCAM HD or XDCAM EX. So suppose I choose XDCAM EX, click on settings, very few settings. In fact, in this case, I can only do 35 megabits and I can do normal high speed fine and super fine. Now with all the MPEG encoding, I have to say, even on our best computers, if I leave it on normal, it works. If I put it on fine or super fine, it generally keels over and can't cope with it. So I tend not to play with that. I might tick closed GOP because closed GOPs are supposed to be slightly better for editing or I might just leave it as it is. If I was to choose XDCAM HD, you'll notice I've got similar kind of things here. And again, leave it on normal. If you choose MPEG, then you can set some stuff up yourself. You've got a lot more control over the bit rates, whether it's constant or variable, things like whether it's iframe and so on. Now, you're only going to fiddle with this lot if you know what it's talking about. I could spend time explaining it here, but I'm not going to. Only fiddle with this if you really know what it is. Basically, I find HQ for nearly everything. And the only reason I might use an MPEG format is to save space. An hour's worth of HQ at 1920 is going to be roughly 100 gigabytes going to be a bit more if you use HQX. If you do it in MPEG it'll probably be about a half to a third of the size so it'll save a bit of space. But like I said it's harder work for the machine and depending on your machine it may or may not cope with it. The other thing you might ask me is why did I choose 8-bit here as opposed to using 10-bit? After all 10-bit is better than 8-bit isn't it? So why don't you capture everything as 10-bit as opposed to 8-bit? Well if you want to make sure you're getting the best quality all the time then set that to 10-bit set that to HQX and just capture it. It'll take up a bit more space, but it'll work. When I'm coming in through HDMI, I'm probably not going to notice the difference. Reasons for that is simple. Most HDMIs only output in 8-bit. So even though I tell it to capture in 10-bit, it's still only getting an 8-bit signal, so it's not going to get any better than it was in the first place. Which is why I chose 8-bit, because that's all I'm feeding into it. Now having chose 8-bit, there is no point in choosing the HQX codec because that's a 10-bit codec and I'm giving it 8-bit, so why not use the 8-bit one? That'll look just as good and be a bit smaller. If I say, no, I'm going to just stick it on the best I can get regardless, well, then I would choose 1920 10-bit. Having chosen 10-bit there, it's silly to say that it's an 8-bit codec, so set 10-bit on that as well. Apart from going uncompressed, that's probably as good as it's going to get. Let's just go into the settings and set super fine on the settings, but yeah, that's probably as good as it's going to get. But to be honest, it probably doesn't look any better than setting the 8-bit settings because I'm feeding it with 8-bit. And this is different to the project settings. There might be reasons why you set the project settings to 10-bit. This is the capture settings. Once you've got it, you shove it on the timeline, then EDS does stuff to it. And if you happen to be color correcting it or doing a graphics or whatever, it might be better to work in 10-bit at that end. But when you're capturing it, why bother to use up more space for nothing? That's my logic of choosing 8-bit. And if you're not entirely sure, well, it's quite simple. Try a bit, have a look at it, see if it looks any different, and then make your own mind up.